Did you know that a few years ago, a price was put on happiness? The winning figure was $75,000 a year. That said, if you earned that much money a year, you could be happy and stop worrying for the rest of your days. Spoiler alert, it didn't turn out that way. The same researchers concluded that after surpassing the $75,000 barrier, happiness no longer seemed to increase. And this was repeated with things that apparently give us happiness and with which we have been traumatized at some point in our life, such as love, fame, or being a Pokemon master. Who knew that catching them all wouldn't bring lasting joy? So, what's going on? Will we never be truly happy? Should we panic and run into the streets? Well, before you start rehearsing that banshee wail, you need to understand what's happening. And in this case, scientists have already found a very fancy name for it, hedonic adaptation. It sounds like a trendy new yoga pose, but trust me, it's not as fun. Imagine you get the car of your dreams, a mansion in Beverly Hills, or even the most expensive Air Jordans from the shoe store. You'll see that it's only a matter of time before those things lose their charm and everything that used to excite you now becomes boring and monotonous. Sort of like the treadmill in your room that's now a glorified clothes hanger. Hedonic adaptation is the tendency to return to a basic level of happiness. For example, when you go from having two likes on your Instagram photos to having hundreds, it should make you happier, right? But there will come a time when those 100 likes will seem like a small thing, and you'll feel just as frustrated as when you only had two. Eventually, even caviar starts to taste like fish eggs. But in this case, it's not the same as when you told your ex, it's not you, it's me. Now we can blame someone else. Advertisements everywhere promise us happiness, and there are so many that we don't know which ones will make us happy. And this is because we're obsessed with happiness. If not, how do you explain the abundance of happiness coaches, trainers, and even apps that promise to make you happy with just a few clicks? Have you seen anyone sad in an advertisement? No. Everyone is happy and content drinking soda, eating pizzas, and even cleaning the bathroom with a smile on their face. Can you believe it? Enough already. If cleaning bathrooms could make people that happy, we'd have a world full of ecstatic janitors. For us, happiness comes when you hit the subscribe button. We get very happy and jump for joy when there's new likes. We are in a world obsessed with happiness, where even that positivity becomes toxic. And what does that mean? Let me break it down for you. Draw a rainbow filled with diverse colors just like your emotions. Now, imagine painting it all in one color. Let's say yellow, which would represent happiness. You would miss out on the richness of the other colors. It's like ordering a rainbow cake and getting a plain vanilla one. Where's the fun in that? The same goes for your emotions. Other emotions like sadness, melancholy, and others serve to discover the world and see it from different perspectives. You don't want to see everything in yellow. That's boring. Instead, paint it multicolored. That's what our other emotions are for. And we say other because they're not negative at all. Imagine if Beethoven, Chopin, or even Taylor Swift only had written happy music. No, sadness can be beautiful too. But in reality, we're like Labradors in search of the perfect tennis ball called happiness. But which one is the real one? It's like trying to find the perfect meme to send to your friends. There's just too many options. And just like your dog, psychologists say that this desperation to obtain happiness is because we want to find it very quickly, as we live in a fast food society. If we don't get what we want quickly, like hamburgers at the drive-thru, we get desperate and start to stress out. But happiness is not like a Big Mac. It's more like a gourmet meal that takes time to prepare. Some psychologists have tried to discover that recipe, one as elusive as the Coca-Cola recipe. And they have found four basic ingredients. The first is self-esteem. In other words, it's the things you do for yourself, like a diet, a course, or even that SpongeBob tattoo you loved so much. The second is pleasure, doing fun things, things you like, and things you should do regularly. The third is altruism, helping others, like buying someone lunch or helping them clean their garage. Just don't expect them to return the favor. That's not how altruism works. The fourth and one of the newest is necessity. It's the ability to use what you have to meet your needs. We already know that we all require more and more, but if we learn to live with what we have, we will be happier. It's like making a meal out of the random ingredients in your fridge. It might not be perfect, but it is satisfying. Other scientists have gone further and searched for whether happiness has something to do with genetics, so they can blame their parents. 
And yes, they have found a happiness gene. According to their results, people in whom this gene abounds will be happier and more resilient than those who don't have it, which helps explain how some people recover quickly from events as terrible as the breakup of the Jonas Brothers. A Harvard study showed that people who had loving parents as children had happier lives as adults. Turns out, a little love goes a long way. And it's because parents assisted their children when they had problems and were willing to help them, something that made them become independent at a younger age and help them learn to solve adult problems and seek help when they couldn't do it. Who would have thought that happiness likes company? What else can we do to be happier? We can learn from gorillas and do what they do. Sing! <laughs> and although they don't know the lyrics to many songs you like, they hum and make up new songs when they go to eat. They sing to their children, which helps strengthen their family relationships, something they'll be grateful for when they're older. Maybe you say, I'm fine like this, I don't need to change, and maybe you're right. But there's also a name for that bubble you live in, information bubble. It's like living in your own world where everything is made of marshmallows, soft and comfortable, but not very realistic. That bubble is basically all the information you have access to right now. It includes what you find on the internet, the news you follow, and your social circle. That's why when you move within it, everything seems okay because you haven't looked beyond it. Remember when Mufasa told Simba not to go to the swamps? He was protecting his son from what lay outside his bubble. Turns out, Mufasa was the original bubble wrap parent. So if I lock myself in my bubble, I'll be happier. Well, yes, but you're missing out on everything outside of it. Complete happiness is impossible to achieve, since we will always be looking for something different, like your dog when it sees a squirrel in the park. It never catches any, but as your pet knows, the fun isn't in catching them, but in the journey itself. So, dare to leave the Shire and go for a walk into Mordor. But instead of a ring, you'll be carrying your own happiness. It will be a long trip, so get three friends to tag along and pack a lot of breakfasts.